Good afternoon. Uh, I want to start by expressing uh, my deepest condolences for the people in Israel and my great concerns regarding the horrific terrorist attacks that went on last Sunday. Um, every day I'm blessed to coach and work with an incredibly diverse population. Every day we work together and collaborate to find ways to better serve each other, respect each other's viewpoints, and educate one another. We work daily to be better today than we were yesterday. Every day we learn more about one another, how we grew up, the livelihoods of our parents and family members, and the experiences we all have had in the course of the last 18 to 60 years. While we have different backgrounds and have experienced different things in life, coming from different socioeconomic backgrounds with diverse religious beliefs and diverse races, none of us tolerate terrorism. What occurred on Sunday was just that. 1,200 Israelis murdered of a population of 9 million would be comparable to 40,000 American citizens murdered in one day. I'm deeply saddened and horrified that this could happen in this world, and I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to help mentor 110 18 to 22 year old boys and help them grow, mature, be educated, learn to respect others, and become the type of men society will appreciate. This week's a lot bigger than football. While I know I have a job to do and our team has a job to do, not for one second will I not keep Israel in my thoughts and prayers and more than Israel, humanity in my prayers. I got into this profession for my love of people, all kinds of people, and I will dedicate all I have to help every player that plays at University of Arizona to become a positive impact on society. Uh, so thank you uh, for allowing me to say that, and uh, now I will answer any questions that you guys have about Washington State. With that, uh, what do you make of Washington State and what they present? Uh, very good football team. There's no question about that. Uh, they are outstanding uh, defensively coached football team. I think uh, Coach Dickert does a great job with uh, presenting a lot of different looks. Uh, they're very fundamentally sound. They're very disciplined. And they got two outstanding defensive ends that we have to be very aware of. Um, they have a back end that works really well together. Um, and that's just one side of the ball. Offensively, uh, certainly recognize how good they are. I think they're averaging or four out of six games, they hit over 500 yards. Um, they're second in the country, I believe, in passing or something to that effect. Um, they're 12, top 12 in scoring. So they're a great challenge. Um, the coordinator they brought in came from Western Kentucky, does a great job. They know how to score points. So uh, we got our work cut out for us this week. And, uh, where's in terms of his health status? Uh, getting better every day, practiced uh, yesterday, practiced the day before, um, continuing to evolve uh, and get a lot of work, uh, moving around pretty good. So uh, be a game time decision as it's been, but um, certainly closer than he's ever been. Uh, certainly uh, been practicing in full pads the last two days. Jaden is not at the 100% that you had mentioned on Monday. Does that mean he doesn't dress, or would he be, uh, like, still the back? Yeah, I fully expect Jaden to dress uh, this week. Um, even if he's at 90%, he'll dress and be the backup. Um, if he's at 100%, he'll dress and start, but that's the he will be in uh, full pads, ready to go. And uh, if not starting, uh, I hope he'll be healthy enough to be in an emergency situation. Jay, there was a, a red zone play early in the third quarter where it looked like Noah had a positive, dis a positive advantage at the tight end with Keon Burnett, but he opted not to make that throw, and, and you guys ended up taking a field goal there. Just your thoughts on maybe that particular play, trying to get more touchdowns in the red zone, and, and if you thought that's a throw he could make there. Um, I don't know if I remember the play we're talking about. What part of the game was in the red zone, early third quarter, um, when you guys took the field loaded up 20 to 14 at that point. Yeah, um, I don't know exactly why why he would have, if his eyes were supposed to be there or not. I'm not the, the play's not ringing a bell right now. Um, it was 17-14, um, and then uh, I, I think probably where his eyes were probably didn't take him there. Uh, maybe what we were trying to get done, but I can't remember exactly. College football every day is kind of a constant battle recruiting. Um, when decommits happen, how do you go about it as a staff, and what is that process like when a player decommits? Um, 
you know, I think college football is very unique right now. I think uh, I heard Coach Stoops said it pretty well the other day. Um, but I, I think what it comes down to is uh, you have to continue to recruit daily. Uh, you can't ever not think that recruiting is over. Uh, I don't think you can ever not think that a uh, player – uh, football is different than any other sport. You know, you talk to these other head coaches of other sports and they all say verbal commitments means all the other head coaches stop recruiting them. In football, verbal commitments means all the other head coaches start recruiting them harder. Uh, it's a very different game. For some reason, um, commitments in football don't mean nearly the same as commitments in college basketball or college baseball or college soccer, or, uh, which, which is a bad thing. It's a bad message. It's a bad message to, uh, I believe, for really the game uh, and for their lives. What type of commitments do you make if commitments don't matter? Uh, might as well not commit and um, then decide on signing day where you're gonna go to school. Um, I believe that we have a situation with decommitments that go on across the country now. It's happening everywhere. Um, guys are transferring and guys are decommitting. So um, until we get this more under control as a college football um, really infrastructure, we're gonna have this and this is not gonna end. So we just keep recruiting. We recruit the guys that wanna be here. We recruit the players that wanna be a part of this program. Uh, we don't stop recruiting somebody if they do decommit. Um, we don't stop recruiting uh, people that do commit. And uh, when we get to signing day, we'll find out who's actually on the team. How would you assess the third wide receiver spot so far this season with Montana's performance and elsewhere? Yeah, um, you know, I would say right now it's kind of been a weird, uh, weird season in that regard because if you look at Montana, I, Tanner, and Mike Wiley, I kind of think that they're all like the third receiver in terms of production. I don't know if there's been much production difference between those three guys, uh, total number of catches, total number of yards, touchdowns. So um, Montana's done a really nice job of – uh, playing the role that we've asked him to play. I think that he would uh, love to produce more. Uh, we'd like to get him the ball a little bit more. We'd like to make a few more plays down the field with him. Uh, where he really uh, shines is down the ball, uh, down the field with the vertical deep ball, as well as catch after, or run after catch, hitches, uh, quick screens. But uh, I think we need to hit him on a few posts and goes and get him going a little bit there. But uh, Tanner and Mike Wiley also have done a great job of being compliments to Jacob and T. And, uh, but for this offense to be what I really want it to be, um, you got to be able to produce at all three receiver spots at a high number. And um, you've got to, I think right now, you know, Jacob is probably second in the conference, I think, in catches. T Max, you know, in fifth or sixth in yards. But we got to get that next guy up there as well in order for us to be the type of offense that I think we can turn into one more do you as a head coach ever get to I don't know if enjoy is the right word but individual matchups like the fact that Washington State has two really good DEs and you have two really good linemen that are going to be going to get some or when, when things like that happen do you, do you it, yeah I enjoy the game of football still um and I think that what's cool about Saturday is that um you know last year we didn't have either of these two tackles playing in the game against Washington State. Um, last year, Peyton was the right tackle and Sam was the left tackle in the game. Um, this year, now you've got Jordan and Jonah playing at tackle this week. And um, similar to the challenge we had UW week, where you have two really good defensive ends, um, to sit back and watch. It's always fun to watch, you know, an elite receiver go against an elite corner, an elite pass rusher go against an elite tackle. Uh, some of those matchups you can see more of than you know, it's hard to see, like, let's call it a great linebacker versus a great running back. That doesn't really fit the same way. Um, or two great quarterbacks going against each other. They don't go against each other. But this one's going to be a fun one to watch. It's going to be a great challenge. And what I know and what we all know is that when you go against um, high-caliber players, high-quality players, it brings out the best in both. And uh, so I think it'll be quite a matchup on Saturday. At the halfway point of the season, who would you say is the most consistent player on both offense and defense? Jordan Morgan, offensively, has been the most consistent for us. Um, he's had a really, really good half, half year so far. Um, brings the same 
energy spirit every single day, plays the same way, um, very composed, doesn't, uh, very rarely do you see a mistake uh, offensively from a guy like, uh, like Jordan. And I would probably say defensively, Dalton Johnson has done a great job. Um, I'm, you know, I, I think you could probably point to Manu, you could point to Dalton, uh, maybe Price Sock. But, uh, you know, if you look at really who's the guy that's been the most consistent, I mean, I think Dalton has four forced fumbles already this year in six games. Um, he's been exceptional in anything we've asked him to do. He's an elite tackler. And um, he's really, every single day, every single game, he's put himself in position. And uh, I guess uh, I'd be neglectful not to mention Stooks um, and the way Stooks is playing as well this year um, on defense. Miss also a personal game for Johnny Nansen, being a, a former kook. What can you say about the job that he's done as your defense coordinator? Yeah, you know, I think Johnny, uh, over the course of, you know, going from his first year as a coordinator to his second year as a coordinator, the growth has been um, very easy to document. Uh, I don't think there's – it's not hard to find statistics that can certainly indicate the, the leaps and the leaps and bounds, how much better we've gotten over one year. Uh, as we've talked about here in the past, I think it was six years, six coordinators in a row, something to that effect. Uh, prior to this year when we've been able to go back-to-back -back defensive coordinator uh, with the same person and then look at the production, the difference in one year. Uh, Johnny, his staff on defense have all done a fantastic job of knowing how to put the guys in the right position. And uh, what you can see is there's a mentality of how we play. There's a physicality. There's a swarm to the ball. There's a, uh, a mentality of we're going to get as many guys around the ball as possible on every single play. And uh, I think Johnny's really grown into becoming an outstanding defense coordinator. Jed, there were, obviously Michael Wiley's out. He's been your primary kick returner this season. Uh, there were a couple of fair catch kick returns in that game at USC. Were those the right calls? And if they were, why, why those in that situation? Yeah, that was a decision that I made before the game that I wanted. Uh, I didn't want to go more than 75 yards on any drive. So uh, you don't have your starting kick returner back there. Um, there's opportunities to... They try to, I think we fair, fair caught one on like the six, one on like the 11 or 13 yard line. You know, next thing you know, there's that momentum shift. They tackle you on the 17, 18. You got to go 82 yards instead of 75. Um, if you don't really feel you're going to get past the 25, I don't see why you want to risk it. So um, I made the decision that game that um, against SC, the type of team SC was, I wanted to make sure that um, if we were going to have to flip the field, if we were going to have to punt it to them, we were going to have, um, they weren't going to be able to go a short field. Uh, the one thing we wanted to try to avoid playing SC was a short field for them. Just kind of following up on Michael Wiley, there's a lot about Jaden and his injury, but any updates on Wiley and Raymond Polito going into this? Yeah, um, <coughs> Mike is closer um, then Raymond for this game, Raymond will be out for this one. Um, Mike is not as close as Jaden is to be able to go, but, um, we're trying to figure out a way if we can get him up for 10 or 15 plays in the game. Thank you.